Thank you. Dr. Warren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I want to ask a simple question. How would you describe the New York Fed's supervisory responsibilities? What, what are you supposed to do and what, what are you not supposed to do? Well, I, th I think of it as the, the Fed's supervisory responsibilities are mainly about uh, ensuring the safety and the soundness of the institutions that we supervise. In other words, that they have sufficient capital, sufficient liquidity, good corporate governance, good risk management systems, that the risk managers are on par with the revenue generators. In other words, they, get, they, actually, have, they actually have clout in their organizations. Um, good. That the so, banks have good culture. Good. So, again, good culture. Good. So, so I just want to break that down a little bit about what safety and soundness means. Are there bank transactions that are perfectly legal but that could threaten the safety and soundness of a bank or of the broader financial institution? I think that there are uh, financial transactions that could pose reputational risk to the bank, uh, that could damage the bank, uh, and I think in that, in, and I think those those type of transactions would need to be ev evaluated. What, what, I'm sorry, need to be evaluated. The question is, are there activities that are perfectly legal, but that could pose a risk under safety and soundness, and therefore should be shut down? If the reputational risk were potentially large enough to threaten the, you know, integrity of the institution, that, or, that was the question. To threaten yeah. the safety. I, I, I think. I think. I think that's it's certainly a possibility. Okay. So illegality is not the test. The test is what threatens the safety and soundness. And it's possible to have an activity I think that's it's perfectly possible. legal. I think it's possible. But that threatens the safety and soundness either of the financial institution or of the. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's possible. Or of the larger financial system. Okay, good. So what about a transaction that does not threaten the safety and soundness of the bank but is arguably illegal? That is, the Fed would have a credible argument that the transaction is illegal, but the bank might be able to show in court that the transaction is legal. What are the Fed's obligations there? Well, I think if we think a tr transaction may be illegal, it's appropriate us for, t for us to refer it to the uh, 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 enforcement okay. authorities. Okay, so if, if you think that it's arguably illegal, you think you should go ahead and, and enforce at that point? Absolutely. Okay. And I, I often describe our federal regulators as the cop on the beat. That is, they're out there to look for illegal or unsafe conduct, try to stop that conduct before it happens. Is that an accurate way to describe what the New York Fed supervisory role is? I, I would characterize it slightly different. Our main goal is to ensure the safety and soundness of the institutions that we supervise. If in the process of doing that we see behavior that we think is illegal, then, then, our, then our job is to refer it to the uh, enforcement agencies, but I don't really think of it as quite as the way you would characterize it as cop on the beat. I think of it more like uh, a fire warden, make sure that the institution is run well, so that you know it's not it's not going to catch on fire and burn down, and 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 and, and managed in a way that if the institution you know is stressed, that it doesn't collapse and threaten the rest of the financial system. So I think I think there is a uh, enforcement element to it. But I don't think our primary purpose as supervisors is really, really the cop on the beat. Now that doesn't mean that if we see something, we should walk by it and ignore it. I don't think that. I don't think that's the case at all. But you don't think you should be doing any investigation? You should wait to see if it jumps in front of you. Well, I, because I think our primary focus on supervision is ensuring that the bank is safe and sound, that is run, that is run well. That means you need to know enough about the bank's activities, not just illegal activities, but all of their activities, well, so that you can stop any activity, illegal or not, that threatens the safety and soundness either of the bank or of the financial system. And yet you think you shouldn't be investigating them? But I, think I don't understand but, what the distinction is. Well, I, think what you're pro I think what you're proposing is something that I think would be very difficult to do in practice, which is us sort of evaluating every transaction that the business, the bank does on a transaction by transaction basis. And I just don't think that's practical. Well, it, it, look, I understand, just like any cop, you make decisions about when you're going to investigate more and what you think is suspicious and where you're going to look for things. And I, I understand that. But that's what it means to be a cop. On so, 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 I'll give you an example on on reference rates. You know, once we, uh, you know, we, we became aware of the the problems in, in LIBOR, we started to look at the bank's uh, reference rate 
setting behavior more broadly. Uh, so if there is a... If Fair there, enough. Do you if, wish you'd looked no. a little earlier? Well... My point uh, excuse is. Excuse me. My, do you wish you'd looked a little earlier? I think it's fair to Maybe say. Maybe investigated a bit more before they had cheated people for years. But, but my point is, once we once we become aware of something, of course we're going to investigate it. <laughs> and but 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 the, but the notion that we're going to be aware of everything that's going on in these large institutions in real time, I just don't think. I just like to hear you say that you're really going to try to investigate things, though. And I think LIBOR is not an example that works for you. Uh, I think you should have been investigating a whole lot earlier. But I tell you what, let's take a look at this. We've got our safety and soundness. We at least can agree on that, that this is important. It's not just illegal behavior that you stop. It's any behavior that threatens safety and soundness of the bank. And illegal behavior, if you happen to stumble across it, which I think is what you said to me. So let's focus. I wouldn't say stumble. I would say see. But you're not looking. No, we're looking. Our eyes are open. All right. So let's take a look at the cases from the Segarra report, uh, recordings. It, let's focus on the deal between Goldman Sachs and this Spanish bank, Santander. Uh, Michael Silva was the New York Fed's head supervisor assigned to Goldman. And he said he had concerns about the Goldman-Santander deal. But he was reined in, this is his quote, by the New York Fed's general counsel, Tom Baxter. Now, do you think it was appropriate for Mr. Baxter to rein in Mr. Silva? Well, I'm not sure that that's actually what happened. Uh, is, the way I understand it is the... the this, this is the quote from the person who says he was reined in. Well, that's, wait, wait, that may be the way he was experiencing it at the time. But let me tell you what I think actually happened. That the transaction went to the legal department of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York to be evaluated about whether it was legal or not. And the legal group in the New York's Federal Reserve Bank of New York determined that the transaction was legal. Now, you know, Michael might, may have felt that he was being reined in because he would have liked the transaction to be illegal, well, so he it, had a stronger I'm sorry, basis. Let's stop right there, Mr. Dudley. The reason we spent all that time talking about safety and soundness is I thought that what we established, and I thought that part we agreed on, is that the test for safety and soundness is not whether or not the activity is legal or illegal. The test is whether or not it might threaten the safety and soundness of the financial institution. And I recall that when we talked about illegal behavior, you said just, I think it was just a couple of minutes ago, that it was appropriate for the New York Fed to shut down activities that were arguably illegal. Not to wait until you could prove they were illegal, but that were arguably illegal, even if the institution might be able to defend itself in court, indeed, if it might be able to win in court. I'm pretty sure that was the question I asked, and I'm pretty sure that's what you said yes to. We made a determination that the transaction was legal. So we, so we, we had eliminated the issue of whether it was illegal or not illegal. We made a determination. Then we went back to the Bank of, Santan, Bank, Bank, Bank of Spain and, and, and asked them what, what was their view of the transaction. <laughs> So here's what I don't understand. You are supposed to be supervisors. Right. Did the general counsel have more information than the lead supervisor in this case? Well, I think the, I think the legal department has a better sense of what's legal than the, than the, the lead supervisor. I know, supervisor. we're talking about, I think we've been through this, about safety and soundness and about right. what is arguably illegal. Right. Is there any better information that the general counsel has that was not available to the lead investigator, who has the most information about the case? The lead investigator? Well, I think the lead investigator probably has the most information about the case, but I think the general counsel and the legal department has a be better, better view on whether the, whether the transaction is legal or not. I mean, the key point here is, did the transaction threaten the reputation of Goldman Sachs to, to, to threaten its safety and soundness? And the conclusion made by, 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 by the supervisory team was no, not in this case. Now, could, no, no, could, let's now, be clear. Now, now, could the it, could supervisory it, could, team, could it, no, this could, is not what Mr. Silva has been quoted as saying. He said he wanted to investigate more. He said he wanted to go further. He gets reined in, and he gets reined in by general counsel. But, but I think this goes but, back but I think, to the cultural think, question think, we asked earlier, why it is that you're not trying to empower the investigators. But we did investigate. All right. We went to the Bank of Spain. Well, we, 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 the Bank right, of Spain. So, so let's talk about that. Okay. You described this deal as your team identified the deal as shady, right? I think this was the team did. And as Michael Silva, who's the lead examiner here, said, uh, lead examiner here said, the deal with Goldman was quote 
designed to help Santander artificially enhance its capital position. Now, what that means is that this shady deal was clearly intended to help Santander evade the regulations, in this case capital standards, of the European Banking Authority. That was the intent of the deal. Once you knew about this plan, did your team contact the European Banking Authority to let them know what Santander and Goldman were up to? I don't know the answer to that. We did contact the Bank of Spain to... to uh, I, that was not my question, whether or not you contacted I, 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 the Bank of Spain that was trying to evade capital standards. My question is, did you contact I don't know the your counterparts on the regulatory side? I don't know the answer to that, Senator. Is there any evidence that you ever got in touch with them? I just don't know the answer to that question. You know, I don't understand my point, my point why is, this uh, wouldn't be a priority. You come across a deal the, the, where two the, parties The transaction was not together. a secret. It was disclosed. It wasn't, it wasn't a secret. It wasn't like this transaction was held in the, it was in the dark. It was what, publicly disclosed. What was not disclosed about this transaction is the capital standard and what the intent of this deal was. And that was to help Santander evade its capital standard. In other words, to help it evade its regulator. That's the European Banking Authority, and apparently you didn't inform them about what they were up to. You know, I, I just want to say on this, we've talked about the report that Professor Byme did, and there are two parts to the supervisory process recognizing the potential problems and then acting on them. And the point he makes in his report, I just want to quote from it, is the problem of, of recognition is hard. But he goes on to say, the problem of action is yet more difficult. We find that during the run-up to the recent crisis, many potential issues were identified but did not ring alarms and were not acted upon. Action requires support from the highest levels of management in the interest of financial stability, even if this makes the banks less profitable. Supervisors must be willing to stand up to banks and demand both information and action, especially when things appear to be going very well. And I agree with that. Based on your responses today, the New York Fed is not there in terms of acting on the issues it identifies. It's not even close. What we've got here, action, is warning a foreign regulator about a plot to evade the law that you have uncovered. Action is about shutting down shady transactions that could imperil the safety and soundness of the bank. And until you're willing to take meaningful action, our financial system and our whole economy remain at risk. Sorry for going over so long, Mr. Right, thank you, Senator Warren.